All right, let's take a look at the basics of starting a sheet metal part. First off, we've got an empty part here, and we see that they don't have any toolbar tabs for sheet metal. Simply right-clicking on any of these tabs here will give us a drop-down list, and you should see sheet metal available. We'll just turn that on. Now we have a sheet metal tab for doing sheet metal features. But we're going to start out simply creating a sketch like we would any, any other type of part. And I'll start with a rectangle. We'll put some dimensions on it. At this point, you're kind of deciding which way do you want to start. Do you want to start with a blank and then you're going to fold it or do you want to start with a folded part and then figure out what the flat pattern looks like. I'm going to start with a uh, blank and then we're going to fold it and then I'll also show you the way to start with it in the folded state. So with the sketch that is closed, if we go to the sheet metal toolbar and pick base flange tab, it takes a closed sketch and allows us to set the thickness the bend allowance and the relief types. You can also use a gauge table and solder ships with a couple examples, say for steel, if you want to pick a particular gauge like 16 gauge. We set it that way. It's now a sheet metal part. And the reason we can tell that is it has a sheet metal one feature in the flat pattern. But right now there's absolutely no bends in there. The base flange created a uh, blank because it was a closed sketch. If I was to start a new part where the sketch was open, and we'll draw the same kind of rectangle here just to keep it consistent where this is 2 by 4 and we change this line here to be construction it's now an open sketch and when I use the base flange tab you can see that I got a part that's folded to begin with Okay, same options as before so maybe I want to use a gauge table, steel you can certainly make your own gauge table and modify it to the stuff that you use. Um, and pick OK. The difference here is that because my blank sketch or my first sketch for the base flange was an open sketch, it gave me a part that is folded. And then on the sheet metal toolbar, we have the flatten feature where we can switch back and forth between the folded and flattened state when we want to see what that looks like. Back in my first part. I had a closed sketch. It was completely closed. There was no opening with the construction line there or whatever. So it gave me a flat blank to begin with. In this case, I'm going to create a sketch. I'll draw a line in here for a bend. And I'll put a dimension on here from the end of the part. I'll make that three. And now I'm going to use a sheet metal feature of a sketched bend. It wants to know what is the fixed face, so when it folds, which side of this line should stay put. I'll use the bigger side. You see the black dot shows up for that. And then the bend position. Is the line actually the center of my bend, or do I want the material to be inside of that line? Maybe that's what I want. And then how? what's the angle supposed to be? We'll pick OK. And you now see we got a bent part. And again, we can use this sheet metal feature to toggle between the flat and the folded state just to see that. But generally, we'd leave it in the folded state. Uh, I mentioned that we can go about this two different ways. Um, I started with a blank. I could start uh, and adding sketch bends. I could start with a part. We'll start a third one here where I'm envisioning it in the folded state uh, to begin with. And maybe I uh, start that same sketch 2 by 4 again. And maybe I'll use my blank flange tab and the gauge table method again just to keep it consistent. And now I want to put a bend in there. Instead of using sketch bends and drawing lines, I could simply just grab the edge flange tool, grab this end and drag it out. Right. At this point, I'm designing or adding material to create this flange. Um, I can define the angle here, I can define its length. I can also define where this is. Do I want the material to the inside so I don't make the overall part any longer? Do I want just the material outside the part? Do I want the entire bend outside the part? We won't make the part any longer than four inches. And we pick OK. This will still give me a, flat, a part that I can fold and flatten. Um, it's just a different method. Edge flange is just grabbing the geometry and dragging it tends to be very handy for most people. If you don't want the entire length of the flange, we can pick Edit Flange Profile. It puts us into something of a sketch mode. 
this little window pops up. We need to keep it up because we're working with the sketch. I'll drag this back so we can put some dimensions on here. Maybe I want this to be uh, an inch and a half. And then uh, one inch back. So that allows me to modify that. I could even go so far as to put a hole in this right away. Maybe I do something to dimension to locate that, but for right now I'll just ignore it. You can pick finish and put the flange in there, or you can hit back and go back to the dialog here. Maybe I actually want to change the uh, the angle instead of 90 degrees. Maybe I only want to go 45. And then the material, you can see there's an automatic relief being put in there because of where the position is, and maybe I want to actually put the bend to the outside so it doesn't make a relief. I'll pick OK. So now I have an extra flange in there, and again, I can flatten that toggle back and forth. We see in 2011 that it puts in what the bounding box uh, for the blank material shape would be, square size anyway. Uh, if we switch back to um, part one here, I had started with the full sketch and put it in the sketch bend. Uh, I could go back to this sketch and say, okay, well I changed my mind on the blank. I need to have a little bit more geometry here. We'll start from this corner and come this way and put in some dimensions. Uh, we'll make that an inch and a half, and then this height here, we'll make that an inch. I need to trim some of that stuff out of there though, like that. I got two pieces there. That shouldn't be too big a deal, but if I really wanted to, I could take that out and merge those together. Exit the sketch, you see my blank updates. And now I could go in here and draw another line for my next bend. And we get to mention where that is, say from that edge there. Make that a quarter inch. And then we'll use our sketch bend again, picking this side and which way do we want it to go. We want it to go 45 degrees, but we want it to bend backwards. And we'll put the um, material to the outside of that line. And you see we got the same thing going on there. And if I wanted the hole in there, I could and sketch right on it or use the hole wizard to put in a hole and do an extruded cut maybe link to the material thickness so I don't have to set the end condition and again we can flatten that okay. so do you want to start in the in the in the blank and then add lines to bend it in or do you want to um, that's the sketch bends or do you want to use the edge flange and pull off edges as you need to add more features? Edge flange tends to be, I think, easier for a lot of people, but it, it's really up to you. And sometimes you get a little different results. Um, ease of use, maybe. Uh, or, you know, I started with this open sketch to turn a part that, uh, start a part that was, uh, had bends in it to begin with. So open sketch with the base flange, the same kind of method there. And I could add edge flanges to this. Um, I could go back and modify this this first sketch to add a little bit more geometry to it if need be. Different ways to go about it. When it comes to time, comes time to make drawings, um, no matter which method you use, um, a lot of times in the drawing we want to see the flattened state and the folded state. Don't worry about doing that. SolidWorks will take care of that for you. I want to point out in the configuration manager here that we have just a default configuration right now. As soon as I use the file menu and pick Make Drawing from Part. Yeah, I should save that, I suppose. I'll uh, we'll pick drawing here. As soon as I get down to the drawing level, let's do piece size. The view palette comes up. You see this flat pattern? It's created it for us. I never had to worry about it. SolidWorks took care of it. So I'll bring out a front view, project the top and a right, and an isometric. I'll put that down here somewhere. Uh, and I'll also bring out the flat pattern. I even drag that out. And if it's not orientated the way you like, this looks completely backwards compared to the front view for me. So with the view selected in the property manager here, we have um, the flat pattern display. And I'm going to maybe flip that view, and now you see it's bending up versus bending down. And it looks like it's orientated in line with the front view as far as the way it's bending. So the property manager gives us that type of controls. Uh, to flip it, also to, to rotate it around if it would fit the paper better, maybe 90 degrees. We could do that and slide it around a little bit. Um, back in the model then, uh, back at this particular part, it now has a derived configuration, which is the flat pattern. It created it for me when I took it to the drawing and it saw the flat pattern available in the view palette. 
you can switch to this configuration and see it in the full or the flattened state and this is just toggled what you don't want to do is come into this default configuration and start messing with that just leave it alone let it do its thing just stay in your default configuration your parent configuration rather than the derived configuration and when you want to go back and forth just to see it use the button and turn it back off okay? this is to toggle between the flattened and folded state just for viewing purposes um, but that's really the basics of building a sheet metal part in SOLIDWORKS